The only reason that we ever want anything in life is because we believe that having that thing will make us feel a certain way that we would like to feel. And so if you can recognize just that one simple fact, it makes everything so much easier. It makes being happy so much easier and makes getting what you want so much easier because it all boils down to just one simple question. And that is, what is it ultimately that I want to feel? If you can answer that question, if you can define what is the feeling that is ultimately at the heart of your desire, then chances are you can, for one thing, you can find ways to get to that feeling that are a lot faster and easier than the thing that you originally desired. And secondly, if you can get to that feeling faster and easier, then it will make it much, much, much more likely that you get the thing that you originally desired and that you get it faster and you get it more easily. So all that you have to do is you have to identify the feeling that you're ultimately going for and then list out some ways that will get you to that same feeling. So, for example, let's say that you want a brand new Corvette or you want, you know, some sort of fast car. And you ask yourself, OK, why do I want this car? And you think about it a little bit like you envision yourself driving the Corvette down the road and you think, oh, OK, I got it. I really, really like that that feeling of excitement and exhilaration when I'm driving a fast car. And then you can say, OK, well, you know, it takes one hundred thousand dollars or something to buy a Corvette. I don't have that right now. You know, if you have the faith that you can get it, you absolutely can. But for now, that's not accessible, at least, you know, not in the near future. So what can I do instead? Well, maybe riding a bicycle really fast gives me a feeling of exhilaration. Uh, maybe going to the, the local uh, roller coaster park and riding a roller coaster gives you that feeling of exhilaration. Um, there's probably there's a whole bunch of other things you can do that are much more accessible. So instead of having to pay one hundred thousand dollars for the new car, well, you can get the same feeling tomorrow just by going to the roller coaster park and paying a hundred bucks for the admission. This was a really, really big revelation for me because there are a lot of things in my life that I that were big goals that I wanted to achieve, most of which required a lot of money and I did not have a lot of money. And so I was working really, really hard to make money and, and uh, not really having a lot of success. And then I learned this concept. And so I started to seek out ways that I could find the same feelings that the things I wanted to buy would bring me but without having to have a lot of money. So, um, for example, I really wanted to have a house out in nature. Um, that's something that I wanted for for a long time because I was living in a little condo in the middle of a city and, and kind of starving for that. And so at the beginning, I had this tendency to focus on the things that I didn't like about my situation. I focused on, you know, the, the noisy city and the um, lack of a nice, peaceful surrounding and and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I had a car that was kind of old and breaking down and I focused on my car problems. And so I, I learned that by doing that, by focusing on the problems, I was actually bringing more problems to myself. And so I, I learned at some point um, in this. I, I made another video about this. I'll link at the end of the this video here. Uh, but I learned that it makes a lot more sense to focus on the things that you like, to be grateful for the things that you have and to find ways to feel the feeling that you ultimately want to feel in a way that's cheaper, easier, more accessible than the thing that I wanted, which was, you know, a new house. Obviously, finding a new house and moving in was a big undertaking, especially at that time when I didn't have a whole lot of money. And so what I did was I found ways to basically find the same feeling. Really what I wanted was a, fe a, a feeling of, of peace and relaxation and being close to God. That's why I wanted to move out into nature. And so I found other ways to feel the same thing. So I could go to the beach. You know, I, I live fairly close to the beach, but I almost never went there. Um, it, it's kind of funny how you notice these things that are like of really high value that are will really make you happy that are right there in your backyard. Uh, that you don't notice when you're focusing on the lack, right? But as soon as you say, okay, now I'm, I'm in solutions mode, I'm going to figure out a way that I can feel this, that I can be close to nature and close to God, then I'm like, oh, I just hop in the car and go to the beach. It's 45 minutes away, right? So I did that, you know, I'd go to parks. Um, I'd, I'd look at pictures of beautiful places. Um, and so basically, I just found ways to feel the feeling that I wanted in the moment instead of putting it off because we always have this tendency of saying, OK, well, I can feel this thing when 
um, I achieve whatever, or when I be, am able to afford whatever, when chances are there's a way to do it now. Now, for a lot of people, they just kind of focus on the things that they don't want, right? For a lot of people, getting what they want is is really like not even part of their imagination because they're so focused on what they don't want. They're focused on their bad boss or they're focused on their bad relationship or they're focused on their car that's breaking down or whatever. Um, and so if you're in that situation, you first of all, you really want to break that habit because when you focus on the things that you don't want, you tend to bring more uh, bad things to you. It's just kind of a law of nature. Um, and you know, you can, you can explain that in kind of mystical terms in terms of law of attraction, or you can explain it in practical terms. Um, I made a video about that too, right? That, you know, if you just focus negatively, then you put yourself in a low mood. And when you're in a low mood, uh, you're not very good at doing stuff. You, you don't come up with good ideas. You push people away, et cetera, et cetera. So there, there's the two sides of that explanation. But Anyway, if you're you're focused on things you don't like, um, obviously you're bringing more of what you don't like to you. But if you tend to have that that mindset, which most people do, it's normal. You know, don't beat yourself up over it. But if that's the case, just ask yourself, well, okay, here's the thing that I don't want. What's the opposite of that, right? What's the opposite of this thing that I don't want that I can um, think about? So if I'm feeling anxious, for example, the opposite of anxious is peace. Or if I'm feeling unappreciated, then the opposite of that is to feel appreciated. I hear a lot of people say that they don't feel like they are appreciated at work. And so you just say, okay, well, what's the opposite of feeling unappreciated? Well, feeling appreciated. And so, well, how do you feel appreciated at work? Well, you quit and you find a new job that's better, um, or you learn a better skill set that's going to get you into a better job. But and you can absolutely do those things, but those are all kind of long term solutions. However, you can feel appreciated much more easily than that right? You can call up somebody who loves you and, and say something nice to them. You can go find a homeless person and, and buy them some food, right? If you want to be appreciated, it's really, really easy to be appreciated. There's a lot that you can do that's a lot easier than going out and finding a whole new career. And so once you you get those little tastes of being appreciated, then that becomes more of a part of your reality. And then you are, will attract that to you with your career. So here it is in, in just kind of a basic four step process, right? So number one is that you state the thing that you want, right? So I want a new car. Um, I want to feel more appreciated. Number two is you define the feeling that you want to get from that thing. Number three is you list ways that you can get that feeling. And you can do this in your mind. You can do it on a piece of uh, a pen and paper and just write out a whole bunch of ways. And finally, pick the easiest one, right? Step four, pick the easiest one out of your list and go do it. Makes me think of that famous line of Ben Shapiro that facts don't care about your feelings. Well, the truth is it's actually worse than that, right? That um, facts are a reflection of your feelings, right? Your feelings create the world around you. They create the life around you that you then have to live. And so these social justice warrior people that, that Ben Shapiro is already always arguing with, they're creating their reality, right? They they are constantly focused on how they're oppressed and how the world is unfair and that they're victims and et cetera, et cetera. They're, they're constantly focused on negative things about their surroundings. And so they draw that negativity to them and they live in a very, very negative world. And then Ben Shapiro, uh, for his own part, right, he's annoyed with these social justice warrior people. And so he attracts them like moths to a flame because he is so focused on doing battle essentially with these people that they all flock to him, right? Because it, and you realize that it's not just a matter of your what you want comes to you. No, it's what you think about comes to you. So if you think about being a victim and, and being oppressed, then you get all this evidence coming towards you of being vic a victim and being oppressed, which chances are has a lot more to do with uh, just the fact that you're difficult to be around and, and you're kind of a downer than anything else. And at the same time, if you are annoyed and you're constantly thinking and you're constantly fighting with these people that are victims and are oppressed and such, then you're going to attract those people to you and they're constantly going to come to you and constantly going to fight with you and you're going to find there's a never ending stream of those people. I know this from personal experience because I did exactly the same thing. 
And, you know, I used to argue with people and I used to fight with people and, and they just kept coming and coming and coming. And so eventually I, I stopped and I said, you know what? You can see the world however you want. Um, I'm not going to argue with people. I'm not going to fight with people. If you want to, you know, if you want to feel like you're oppressed and you're a victim, then then OK. Like that's that's your choice. And as soon as I did that, then all of a sudden those people just gradually disappeared from my life. Now I almost never hear from them. So the moral of the story is that you should do what makes you happy and stop doing what makes you unhappy. And that's, that might seem like the simplest thing in the world, but uh, human beings are terrible about that, right? We constantly continue doing things that are unhappy, uh, that make us unhappy and forget to do the things that do make us happy. And so I believe that God actually gave us those emotions for the sake of guidance, the same way is that if you, you know, stick your hand on a hot stove, it hurts, it's painful, and that makes you pull your hand away. Well, negative emotions serve the same purpose. If you're feeling a negative emotion, it means that you're doing something wrong and you have to get yourself out of that situation somehow. And so negative emotions really aren't negative at all, actually. They're, they're bad feeling emotions is a better way to say it because actually they're protecting us. They're helping guide us to the right thing. So if something feels good emotionally, chances are you're on the right track. If something feels bad emotionally, chances are you are on the wrong track. That, that's why we have emotions like fear to keep us from going into danger. We have emotions like guilt to keep us from doing evil things to each other. So if you can do what makes you happy, stop doing what makes you unhappy. Not only will you live a much better life, but you'll also get the things that you want a lot faster and a lot easier. Now, I'd also like to tell you about a radical experiment that I undertook in my own life that was doing precisely that, that was using my emotions as a guide and doing things that make me happy, stop doing things that made me unhappy. Um, and it created a radical shift in my life. I started making more money. I started having better relationships. I finally got that house in nature that I that I so much wanted um, and a bunch of other things. And so if you'd like to see how I did it, I break it all down in this video here. I think you will really enjoy it. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.